I've now spent two videos on sequences. I needed that groundwork, but now I'm going to turn to the main definition for the last three weeks of the course, infinite series. A sequence was just a list of numbers. An infinite series is an infinite sum, not just a list, but infinitely many numbers added together. This is the notation, it's normal sigma notation, but now the upper bound is replaced with infinity. n is the index, n equals 1 is the starting index or the lower bound, a sub n is the term. And if I just want to talk about the terms without thinking of them as sums, I can think of the sequence of the terms a n as in the previous two videos. That's the idea, an infinite sum. Looks just like a finite sum, but goes on forever. Does this idea make sense? Is taking an infinite sum a thing that can be done? It is, and calculus makes sense of it. How? Well, the same way that calculus does everything. It sets up an approximation process, and it takes the limit of that process. That was how derivatives were defined, that was how integrals are defined, and it's also going to be how infinite series are defined. The approximation system here is pretty simple, it's partial sums. Instead of an infinite sum, I can take a finite piece of it. I'm going to call s sub n the notation for a partial sum. It's the sum of just the first n terms, not the whole thing. I've changed the name of the index inside to k here, since I'm now using n to index the partial sums. There are two indices, n for the partial sum, and k for the index inside each partial sum. So these are ordinary finite sums, these partial sums, and there's nothing wrong here. I'm always allowed to sum finitely many things together. Well, then the partial sums themselves form a sequence. So that's a sequence, not a series. That's just a list. There's a list of partial sums. Using the first two videos of this week, what is the limit of this sequence? Well, the partial sum is an approximation process. It's adding up a piece of the series. The limit of the partial sums is the limit of the approximation process. So that limit should be the value of the series if it exists. And that's how you sum infinitely many things. You sum only finitely many of them, and you take the limit as the number of things you're adding up gets larger and larger without bound. If that limit exists, if you can find it and calculate it, then it makes sense to talk about adding up infinitely many numbers and treating them as the value of that limit. So let me start with Zeno's paradox. The paradox said that I had to add up all the halves, a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth and so on. Well, these are the numbers one over two to the end. This is in fact a geometric sequence of numbers with common ratio one half. Well, then I can write an infinite series. The sum as n goes from one to an infinity of one over two to the n. One plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth, so on and so forth. Well, let me look at the partial sums. S1 is just one half. S2 is one half plus a quarter, which is three quarters. S3 is that three quarters plus an eighth, which is seven eighths. And S4, if I add them all up, I get 15 sixteenths. And in this way, again, I can argue that the nth sum should be two to the n minus one over two to the n. Each numerator in this sum is one less than the denominator, and the denominators are powers of two. Therefore, the nth partial sum is s to the n, or sn rather, equals 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. Well, then I can take the limit of this sum. Asymptotically, the numerator and denominator have the same asymptotic order, 2 to the n, and the leading coefficients of the 2 to the n's are both just 1, therefore this limit is just 1, and I conclude that the sum is just 1. This is a solution to Zeno's paradox. You actually can do all these halves. You can add them all up. You can add up all infinitely many things, and they just produce one whole. They don't produce infinity, they produce one. Now let me talk about another very interesting example, the harmonic series. Unlike the Zeno paradox geometric series, the harmonic series diverges. Its sum will grow larger and larger without bound. Let me prove this by looking at the partial sums. So S1 is just one, it's one over one, which is one. S2 is 1 plus a half, well, it's 3 halves. And let me skip one look at S4. S4 is 1 plus a half plus a third plus a quarter. That's how the harmonic series works. I'm adding up all the consecutive reciprocals. Well, this is larger than a similar sum, where I replace 1 third with a quarter. Replacing a fraction with a smaller fraction means a smaller sum. Well, then the smaller sum is 1 plus a half plus 2 quarters, and 2 quarters is a half. So that adds up to 2. Let me skip ahead again a 
a bit. S8, the eighth partial sum, is larger than this sum, where I replace one third with a quarter as I did before, and then I replace all of the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh with an eighth. I've replaced with smaller numbers, so I get a smaller sum. However, compared to the previous S4, I've now added four eighths, well that's another half, so this sums to five halves. I can continue this way. S16, by replacing most of the new terms with one over 16, is larger than three. I've added another half, five half, halves plus a half is three. Similarly, S32 is larger than seven halves, S64 is larger than four, and so on. I had S4 was larger than two, S16 was larger than three, S64 was larger than four. Every second power of two, 2, 16, 64, and so on, is larger than the next whole number. I can write this as S2 to the 2k minus 2. That partial sum is larger than k, if I sort of line up the indices properly uh, and want to make it a formal relationship. And then I look at the limit. Well, the limit of all the partial sums needs to be larger than the special powers of 2, since I'm always adding positive numbers to them. And these special 2 to the 2k minus 2 partial sums are larger than just the numbers k. And the limit of k is infinity, so the limit of anything larger is also infinity. What I've shown here is that the sums get larger and larger. After 64 terms, adding up the first 64 reciprocals, the sum is larger than 4. After 256 reciprocal additions, the sum is larger than 5. After 1024 reciprocal additions, the sum is larger than 6. And it takes a long time, but it does keep getting larger and larger forever. It will get larger and larger than any finite bound. The series is divergent. Let me look at this sum again. One thing is very instructive about this example. The terms, the 1 over n, are getting smaller and smaller. Indeed, the limit of the terms is 0. The reciprocals themselves are getting very tiny. Even so, they can still add up to infinity. Even adding smaller and smaller pieces can still result in an infinite sum. And this is an important caution. Intuition is often misleading for infinite series. There will be more strangeness to come in the weeks, uh, in the next couple weeks as well. So be careful about what assumptions you make. When you need to go back to the formal definition and make sure that something you think about infinite series is actually true. Because sometimes they do not act like we think they ought to.